Hi, my name is Richard Shankman, and I directed Jerome Bixby's The Man from Earth, as well as the movie you're about to watch, The Man from Earth Holocene. My team and I are working very hard to make sure that every single person in the world who wants to see the movie can stream or download it, even to the point of uploading it ourselves to the file sharing community. But while it's true that many people will have free access to the movie, that hardly means it was free to make. Dozens of people worked for months or years on the film, and they deserve to be paid just as you deserve to be paid for the work that you do, whatever that work is and wherever it is you do it. That's why I'm so grateful to all of you who visit manfromearth.com and make a donation of any size if you've watched the movie without paying for it up front. It's a global experiment in the honor system. We're asking people, if you watch our movie and you like it, will you pay something directly to the people who made it? Thank you again for your support, and I hope you enjoy the Man From Earth Holocene. you would. Look at this guy. He's like half animal. Uh, he's the same as us. Homo sapiens, everyone. Genetically, biologically, no different than you or I. We even live in the same geological epoch as them. The Holocene. Uh, it started right after the last ice age. The fact is, cro is an outdated term. It, it, it merely separates them as Europeans as opposed to Africans. Any of this ringing a bell? <sighs> yeah, they had the same hopes and fears as us, the same ties to family and group. Actually, I think they had a stronger tie to group than us and to their fellow living creatures. But let's think about it. If this man were alive today... He would be very old. <laughs> <laughs> especially considering most never made it past 32. He might even appreciate antibiotics and running shoes. But what would he think of what we've done with our world today? This small knit group that he would have died to maintain is now a self-involved generation of social media addicts so far removed from his perception of humanity as to seem alien. He's talking about you, bro. Sorry. Let's talk about tools. You're a tool. The most basic tool would be a, a simple rock. With a hammer stone, you can break another rock and create a sharp edge. Now, this sharp flake of stone can be used to skin... You almost done? Not really. Can't you just take pictures? That's not the assignment. <laughs> Professor Solman wants us to identify the individual markers that indicate a skull is, say, Paranthropus boisei versus Paranthropus robustus. Oh my God. What? That's Professor Young. What the hell is he doing here? Professor Kittress is giving those kids a tour. Oh, and he tags along. That's so cute. For God's sake, Tara, they live together. And besides, he's like a thousand. Um, 40 tops plus 
Kitcher's a little hottie, so I gotta step up my game. <laughs> you coming? Yeah, I guess so. Professor Young, uh, hi. <laughs> it's just so cool seeing you here. Isabel and I were just doing some research. I'm taking shamans, early transitional humans. Sketching femurs and jawbones. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Smaller brain case. Slight crest on the top of the skull. Wide upper jaw. A small teeth. Homo habilis. Well done. Wait. You teach comparative religion. Well, there's more to human history than religion, Tara. Sure. <laughs> we're just gonna go grab coffee. Do you wanna join? Uh, I'm gonna grab a bite with Professor Kittress when she finishes, but thank you. Mm -hmm. You like mm -hmm. these Cro-Magnons? Well, they're more of a mashup of various early humans, but I liked cave paintings. Mm, me too. Hey, let's get a shot in front of the display. Uh, Isabel, Carol, tell me you wanted to borrow some books. Come by any time, take whatever you want. If I haven't read them yet, I probably won't. Um, thank you, Professor Young. You're welcome. I'll see you girls in class. I like the paintings. Dude, he knows more about this stuff than the museum people. They're called curators. My point is, he's a very brilliant man. With a great ass. shower you want to come wash my back in truth yes however how's this batch <clears throat> any geniuses i should be on the lookout for you mean anyone who can write a coherent sentence you remember when kids went to college to expand their minds now it seems to be just a perfunctory step on the way to silicon valley and those are the good ones oh wow you really think young people have changed that much in 20 years I like this gray. Mm -hmm. But if it bugs you, then color it. <laughs> I won't tell. You know Mohammed dyed his hair? Say, if it's good enough for the prophet, then... Nobody notices except you. And he hasn't aged a day in 10 years. Every woman on the faculty would give anything to have that secret. Is that what they're after, Edith? Oh, stop, Harry. <laughs> then switch to spin class if you're sick of Zumba. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do. The doctor just said you need to... I'm not nagging, mother. You're the one complaining about... I gotta go to class. I'm gonna be late. I'll tell you what, Mother. Why don't we all just take care of ourselves for once? Sound fair? Wow. Again? I... She spent so many years focused on my father's illness that now... God, Isabel. You put everything on hold forever while he was... She's gotta back off. It's your life, right? Isn't it, finally? No, I'm sorry. I love you too. I'll call later. Bye. You are a way better daughter than I will ever be. Hey guys, this is Matt Douglas from Primal Kickboxing. 
Let's go. Let's go. You ready? Take it easy on So I get into position. First thing I do is I lead with a head kick. Two punches. Come on, focus, man. Seriously, man, why, why, why do I even bother? Really? Oh, uh, my fault, man. I, I'm literally on my way downstairs right now. Five, four, three, two, one, boom! See how That's fast. amazing. I believe you can't even see you. You're so fast. You're like the flash. Yeah, come on. I'm waiting on you. We're all burning, every one of us, burning with desire. We're burning with a fire caused by what the Buddha called the three poisons, greed, anger, ignorance. Except he taught us that we can fix this. We can turn them around and greed becomes generosity. Anger becomes compassion. And ignorance becomes wisdom. There are miracles around us all the time, he said. The fact that we're here together in this room is a miracle. Yeah. Isn't the Buddha kind of a hypocrite? I mean, sure, he gave up all worldly goods, his father's money, told us all to live a life of restraint, and then he ended up like super fat. <laughs> like crazy fat, like come on dude. You're talking about the statues you see in Chinatown, right? Yeah. The Buddha depicted in those statues, he's Asian, right? Right. So... It's not the Buddha. Boom. What, what do you mean? Well, think about it. Siddhartha Gautama was an Indian from Nepal. A Chinese monk came to India, became a Buddhist, went home and started spreading the religion. The Chinese mixed in Taoism. Their monks introduced the head shaving, the robes, the fat, happy Buddha named Hote. The actual Buddha was a regular man, normal body, full head of hair. But he was a god. No. Never claimed to be. Just a man who thought long and hard about the human condition and achieved enlightenment. Like Jesus. Only without the long blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> oh, but Jesus wasn't just a man. No. He claimed to be the son of God. He died and was resurrected. So we know he was divine. You know or you have faith? You can only know what you can prove. God is beyond proof, logic, or reason. You can believe in God or Jesus through faith. But that's different from knowing. Well, I know Jesus existed. There's historical evidence of that. And uh, I have faith that he was divine. Aquinas said faith is a divine act supernaturally bestowed. Ask and ye shall receive. Kierkegaard, on the other hand, said that we must leap to faith. It is an act that you must choose to perform. Kierkegaard was more demanding. Okay, he was sick of people sitting around talking about religion all day and not doing anything about it. I hope he didn't mean this class, though. <laughs> but uh, weren't we supposed to be talking about Buddha? They had a lot in common, Jesus and Buddha. How so? Well, there's a lot of overlap in their philosophies. They both taught the golden rule that we should be charitable and not judge others. But the Buddha said you shouldn't believe in something just because it's written in scripture. 
The whole premise with Jesus is to accept on faith. That's a pretty huge difference. And also the purpose of suffering. Jesus suffered for us. Uh, while the Buddhist whole thing was to eliminate suffering. Eliminate desire. Which is what causes suffering. I know. I listen. I was listening. <laughs> okay. Next time we will cover the path to nirvana. And we will wrap this semester up with Jainism. It's like Buddhism, but less fun. Jain women have to be reborn as men to achieve enlightenment. Uh. We all know it should be the other way around. Thank you. Great lecture. Yeah, you never use any notes or anything. You just like know all this stuff. I've been in it a very, very long time. So in honor of wrapping up the unit, we're having a Buddhist vegetarian dinner. Think you could come? Thank you, but I don't think so. Busy? I appreciate the invitation. Oh, and for what it's worth, Buddha ate meat. He never said you had to be a vegetarian. He just didn't like seeing animals killed. Yeah, who does? But, you know, bacon. Bacon, donuts, best invention ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like Emma. I've not seen it. Oh, uh, you haven't seen it? No. Everybody's seen I'm it. I'm not, no. <laughs> so, so is he coming? Uh, Isabel can work on him, right? I can try. I keep his classes almost over. I yeah. know. You know, and next semester, he's teaching lame Abrahamic and Zoroastrian religions again. There's nothing lame about Abrahamic religions. Well, you know what I mean. It's just that... He needs new classes. He should do Hellenistic. Ah, uh, yeah, Zeus and Heracles and whatnot. That'd be cool. Yeah, the only problem is he, he only does real religions, Lico. Huh. You don't think the Greeks and Romans were on to anything? Christians got half of their stuff from the pagans. Or do you need to take world of the early church again? Guys, we need to focus on what's important. Getting Professor Young to come to dinner. There is just so much in that guy's head I want to get at. Me too. Now, well, how do we get him to come? I think Tara probably has a few ideas. Don't be gross, Lico. Leave her alone, man. You going to that Delta side party then? Ugh, those guys are animals. Yeah, party animals. <laughs> we got, what are you, five? Um, no, I do not need to get drunk on a Wednesday night. Thank you, with the bunch of boys. You're lost. Keep going. St. Philip? Uh, well, St. Philip has Bible study on Wednesdays. You have no short-term memory, do you? I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> John, I'm glad I caught you. Dr. Parker, did we have an appointment? I got to share this with somebody, and you're the only one I know that can appreciate it. I got this at a garage sale last weekend. It's a 75-year-old bottle of single malt scotch. Wow. Yeah, I paid entirely too much for it. But the story, this woman's husband brings it back from Scotland in the 60s, and they've been saving it for a special occasion, and saving it, and saving it. And the special occasion never came. And he died a couple of months ago. Ooh. Now she's selling his stuff and moving to Costa Rica. Naturally. But here's the kicker. We we'll get home, and we get a message from Kitty and Ron. The baby came. I'm a grandfather. Congratulations. Fantastic. <laughs> oh. Special occasion. Yes, indeed. Uh. To my grandson. To you. Oh, my. That is terrible. I don't know if I've ever tasted anything quite like that. It just goes to show that nothing lasts forever. Even whiskey spoils. Who knew? Oh. Grandson, John. On one hand, it's incredibly invigorating. On the other, it means I am so old. Yeah. Each day, as he grows, learns to walk, learns to talk, it means I'm getting one day closer to death. Another drink? What the hell? Yes. Jeez! 
That's awful. Now, I'm not getting maudlin. It's just life. And, well, this brings it home. Do you ever regret not having kids, John? I'm sorry, I don't mean to pry. Don't be sorry. It's difficult to discuss. What is it? Say, you want to go have a real drink? I can. I have to go home and cook Carolyn dinner. But congratulations, Dr. Parker. I couldn't be more happy for you. It's open. For Carolyn? Mm hmm. Coffee table's fine. So, about those books. They're in the den. Grab all you want. Have you given that dinner any further thought? I mean, you could bring Professor Kittress, obviously. We'll see. Well, <laughs> thanks, Professor. Oh, and please tell Miss Kittress I said good night. I will. Mmm, smells great. Thanks. It's getting harder and harder to find anything that isn't loaded with mercury or farm-raised and filthy water. <laughs> Thank God we still have Pop-Tarts. Miracles all around us. <laughs> mm. How was your day? As always, this is the highlight. I was thinking of going hunting this weekend, starting to forget what real food tastes like. Mm. I thought you could come with me to the Hillary and Rob thing. You know, she's feeling really down lately, and we thought a, a, a party would cheer her up. Hosting parties always stresses her out. Well, you know, people laughing, carrying on. I don't know. I, I think I need some time alone. You are the king of alone, John. Why not give the opposite a chance? I have. It doesn't work so well for me. Okay, I know. I'm going to go change. Okay. Oh, God, you scared the crap out of me. Sorry. If you didn't miss anything. Typical Delta Psi party. Just pack as many people as you can into a room and spray them down with beer. Figuratively speaking, I hope. Eh, for the most part. What's that? Book on early man I borrowed from Professor Young. Ooh, how'd it go? Well, I asked again about dinner. Mm -hmm. Told him he could bring Professor Kittress. Ugh, what for? Less than we need is another check. Anyway, this guy Jenkins is an archaeologist with a lot of field work under his belt. Mm -hmm. It books really, really good. But, but the spine wasn't even cracked, although it's personally signed. Mm, he's cute. Or was. To my dear friend... John Oldman. Wait, what? I know, right? Maybe he's kidding. Old man instead of young? Well, it's dated May 2007, so that would make Professor Young, like, 33, maybe? Exactly. I mean, you're not going to call an old man old man. You're going to call a young guy that. It's like calling a big guy tiny. No, it's not old man. It's old man. And maybe it's Kittress's book. <sighs> maybe. So who's this Jenkins guy? Let's go to the interwebs. <laughs> 
Arthur M. Jenkins. Taught at Santa Clarita University. Zillion archaeology digs. Oh, academic awards. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. He wrote some other books. Ooh. This last one, jeez. What? The Longest Night, My Conversation with the Man from Earth. About the night he spent with a university professor named John Ullman who claimed to be 14,000 years old. And the comments are scathing, puts it mildly, yikes. Longest Night would merely be melodramatic sci-fi nonsense, but the author presents this hokum as nonfiction and thus abandons any academic authority he may have once possessed. Ouch. Ooh, 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 get this one. Offensive to the religious and non-religious alike, Jenkins asks us to believe that the savior himself is a practicing Buddhist who walks among us in the guise of a handsome, mild-mannered university professor. And that sounds like Professor Young, and he knows everything about Buddhism. But like, the savior, like Jesus? He could totally be my own personal Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> We are totally getting this book. Like a thief in the night. I woke you, I'm sorry. You must be getting out of practice. At being sneaky? Stealthy. We really have to go. We could spend the whole weekend in bed. And go to Hillary and Rob's thing? Fair trade, isn't it? I'm going stir crazy, Carolyn. I hate when you disappear. I know. It's just something's something's not right. I'm not bouncing back the way I'm used to doing. Well, it's called getting older. But if you Insist on stomping around the woods like a caveman. I suppose it's a better midlife crisis thing to do than, I don't know, buying a motorcycle and taking off with some student, right? I better try and get back that deposit I put down on the Ducati. Oh, no, thanks, Mom. We're good. Hey, I want something, Miss Nichols. Hey, me too. They're kidding. Thanks, Mom. Can you talk it off, man? Oh, my God, she's adorable, by the way. All right, so what's so uh, earth shattering? Um, can we? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on with pickles and mustard. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. We're fine. <laughs> ah, so what's up? For 10 years, this guy, Arthur M. Jenkins, taught at Santa Clarita University alongside a history professor named John Oldman. Then one night, this Oldman guy gathers his professor friends and tells them that he is really 14,000 years old. 
he was born a caveman, somehow became immortal. He knew uh, Columbus, Vincent Van Gogh, just all this crazy stuff. He would always use the name John, often with a pun for a last name. He'd stay in one place for 10 years or so until people started realizing he didn't age. Lived under hundreds of identities, including, wait for it, Jesus of Nazareth. Wait, what? He lived for thousands of years, you know, never aging, never dying, traveling the world. Studying with the Buddha. Until one day he set up shop in Jerusalem and started preaching. Yada, yada, yada. He gets crucified. His wounds heal. He sneaks off. And he's... we have Christianity <laughs> by accident. What do you mean, yada, 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 we have Christianity? You, you can't just... It's science fiction, all right? People publish speculative fiction about Jesus all the time. You should see what they write about Kirk and Spock. Better yet, you shouldn't. Oh, but he said that it's a true story. See, it says it right there. It's nonfiction. Oh, well, then it must be true. There are plenty of alien abduction books in the nonfiction section. Look, I checked up on Arthur Jenkins, okay? He was a tenured archaeology professor, published a pile of books, the real deal. And then this one came out, and he got laughed off the planet. No wonder. Okay, but he did his research, found out that the John Oldman he knew didn't exist until 2001. No mention of him anywhere. His references, driver's license, W-2, everything turned out to be fake. Jenkins even tracked down two previous colleges where he'd taught under different names, John Magdal and John Permian. Magdal? Magdalenian? I have no idea what Permian is. The first great extinction, 250 million years ago. Yeah. They both also had fake references and left abruptly after about 10 years. And their descriptions, John Oldman, John Magdal, John Permian are virtually identical. Okay, Oldman's DMV record somehow vanished two days after he did. I mean, Google him now, the only reference is this book. If this Oldman guy is real, he makes his past disappear every time he changes identity. Makes sense. A million years old, staying under the radar, gotta keep moving. Philip, we're not trying to offend you. We... No, I'm not, I'm not offended. No, I know, it's just, you really believe. Yeah, okay, look, I know that the Earth isn't flat. I know it's more than 6,000 years old, but I believe that a man named Jesus lived and died for our sins. Um, Philip, you know there are millions and millions of people who don't believe in Jesus Christ divinity. I mean, Jews, Hindus, Wiccans, plenty more. Wiccans. Um, yes, but that doesn't mean they're right. Some people believe the galactic dictator Xenu brought his people to Earth and hid them in volcanoes, so... <laughs> the point is, is that Jenkins' book is just a story. Now, if I could allow my faith to be shaken by the, the fantasies of a disgruntled college professor, I'm not really much of a Christian, am I? So, Jenkins writes a book about John Oldman. Fine, whatever. What's this got to do with any of us? Sean. I found this book at Professor Young's. Read the inscription. To my dear friend, John Oldman. Hey. Right. So... Professor Young and John Oldman knew each other? Yeah. Okay. What if Professor Young actually is John Oldman? Well, how do you make that leap? Are there any pictures? Okay, well, Jenkins talks about several times when Oldman conspicuously avoided having his picture taken. I mean, turning around, stepping behind someone, answering a phone call that no one ever heard ringing, whatever, just to avoid being photographed. To Jenkins' knowledge, the only existing picture of John Oldman was taken in 2006 at a barbecue. Huh. Hmm. Wait, so if Professor Young is Jesus Christ returned, that means we're in the end times. But if Jesus never left, then he's not returned. He's just here. <laughs> cool. I'm hungry, Tara. You want to get something? Yeah, sure. Yeah.
What? I found an email for Jenkins. Look at that. Look at that. I think we got lunch. Ah, oh, nice. Ah, keep it. There's another beauty. All right, Betsy, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Too. Okay. Let's go make that move. Okay. Let's move this night. There we go. Oh. What is this? The longest night. Find it fascinating. Do you want to speak to me, John Oldman? Miss Chang, why don't you and John Oldman go straight to hell? God damn it! Why don't they leave me alone? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, 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 come here. Don't run away. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to frighten you. I'm not so sure about this anymore. It was your idea. I know, but I work for Professor Pictures, and now I'm feeling really violating, you know? So let's go home. I feel like I want to know, you know? So let's keep going. I wish Jenkins was more responsive. I wish he was less of a dick. God, it's just that I... It, okay, do you want proof or not? Photo something? Mm -hmm. Well, then... does have a van go. Uh, total fake. That'd be worth like three zillion dollars. Cool taser. What's this for? What do you think, perv? Don't touch that. be objective but I really want to believe this because it would be so deeply deeply cool uh, let's split up I'll do the bedroom okay oh there's a basement
this can't So my cousin Janet's an art history major at Columbia. She said the painting could be an unregistered Van Gogh. Well, we looked into the authors of those books from the basement. Any history they had prior to publication is sketchy or non-existent. Some of the publishers are out of business, but I reached three. None of them had any contact information for the author. Each guy vanished with no forwarding address within a couple of years of publication. Jonathan Evermore, he wrote the sci-fi novel Everlasting Tomorrow about an immortal search for the meaning of his solitary existence. So I called Bantam, told him I was his granddaughter looking for his royalty payments. She said she was so happy I called since they've been piling up since 1966. <laughs> no, asshole, we are not taking his money. <laughs> yeah. Wait, guys, we're just gonna leave all that money? Isn't it weird? Every time someone claims to have been reincarnated, they were always like Napoleon, you know? Alexander the Great, Cleopatra or something. Yeah, well, it's never Cleopatra's slave, you know, the one that cleaned out her chamber pot. Or the guy making chamber pots. John Oman says he knew the Buddha. Sailed with Columbus. No, he didn't he didn't actually sail with Columbus. What? I read the book, dude. Now come on, get in there. There you go. So, uh. So you saw it though? Van Gogh. <laughs> you starting to believe a little bit. Look, just because a guy is, you know, 14,000 years old doesn't mean that he's Jesus. Yeah. Could be the guy who made the nails for the cross. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, come on. I was Malcolm X, my past. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> And if it's not you, I apologize for the wrong number, whoever this is. So, Dr. Jenkins, my name is Isabel Chang. I do apologize for calling so late, although I did try emailing. Anyway, here's the thing. I believe my professor is John Oldman. He's 
going by the name John Young here at Chico. Please call me back if you can, okay? I really, really, really would love to talk to you. I, I know you took a lot of crap for your book, and I just want you to know... I believe you. There is something different about John Young. My number is 530-555-0168. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, we will fax that right over. Another one? Yeah, fax. God, what year is this anyway? <sighs> hello? Uh, hello. Um, I'm calling about your email. Yes. Uh, who is this? This is Violet Colson. Um... I'm, I'm sorry, Violet... Colson from Central Idaho College. Well, I've been retired for many years now, and my daughter works at the college in admissions just like I did. But it was the funniest thing the other day. She was working at home, and I walked, walked past her desk just when your email came. Oh, and I... Well, I saw the photo... And I recognized him immediately. You did? Oh, he was a remarkable man. You just never forget that kind of a person. What do you remember about him? Well, he was the best anthropology professor we ever had. He, he just had a way about him. You felt you could tell him your secrets. And he always had the best advice. Uh, this was how long ago? Let's see. Oh, that's about 1957. And you remember him clearly? Oh, yeah, and he was a very handsome man, too. John Place? P-L-E-I-S. That's a funny name. You know, it kind of sticks in your head. I tried to see what else I could find before calling you, and there was nothing. He just disappeared. Yes, he does that. Um, well, well, thank you so much, Miss Colson. This is your number if I have any more questions. Yes, yes, yes. Great. Well, thank you so much. Goodbye, then. Well, goodbye. Uh, place? Place to see? Yes. Okay, so we've contacted, what, 60 small colleges in 14 states, and this was our second hit so far. I mean, Professor Young is a dead ringer for, for teachers in Idaho and... Western Wyoming, John Mortem, Archaeology, 1979. Uh, hello? Isabel Chang? Hi, this is Arthur Jenkins. You've been trying to reach me? I have, yes. 
Get me a picture. A new clean picture. Email it or text it to this number. Um, I emailed that one. No, no, no. Brand new. Full face. Do that and we'll see. Otherwise, we have nothing to talk about. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. Oh, great. You... Professor, uh, we know we're early, but... It's the last class, and we don't have you next semester, so we thought we'd have a little goodbye party. <laughs> Not going anywhere, you know? Well, we know, but... Uh, here. Cappuccino. My weakness. Thank right you. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Quick picture! <laughs> uh, wait, can we go again? Just one more. You know the rules. Real, real quick, real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, class has oh, begun. Uh, Take your seats. Cell phones off. Thank you for the coffee. Cell phones off. I knew it. He did it on purpose. I'm sure of it, man. He didn't want his picture taken, so we messed up both shots. Well, I guess after... 14,000 years, you learn a thing or two about hiding. Yeah, but these days, I mean, there's cameras everywhere. He won't be able to hide anymore. Whatever he's been doing all these years, changing his identity, I mean, it's over. Time's up, don't you see? What do you suggest? Maybe we just talk to him. Tell him the truth. What truth? That we know who he is. Based on a discredited book by a lonely old crank and some circumstantial evidence? We are not crazy people. There is something special about John. I mean, we all knew it the first time we ever heard him speak, right? All throughout history, there have been prophets, visionaries, men and women touched by God. I mean, who's to say that John Young isn't one of these people? Why is that so impossible? Well, it sure isn't likely. Philip, I'm not saying that he's the son of God. But if he is 14,000 years old, then he's the wisest man in the world, in history. Okay, he should be listened to, followed. Worshipped? Is that what you're going to say? No. There could be a whole new... Religion. Or something around him. A corrective for everything everyone has gotten wrong about Jesus for the past 2,000 years. If that story's true, then everything I believe for half my life is a total lie. Everything that millions and millions of people throughout history have believed and lived and died for is total bullshit. So, no. Okay, okay, one clear picture of Professor Young's face, that's it. Hey, Betsy. Gotta hit the road for a few days, honey. But I'll have Suzanne come by and check on you. Be a good girl.
Looks nasty. Ah, uh, got sloppy. <sighs> Stupid mistake. What's up? You worry about your grade because you shouldn't be did great. Oh, it's not that, but thanks. Then what's going on? Was it something specific, Tara? I wanted to apologize for yesterday. The pictures and everything. We're all just really going to miss you. That's okay. I'm going to miss you guys, too. I maybe don't act it, but I've been lonely most of my life. Boys only cared about. And the girls hated me because of it. My parents' friends were always being creepy, and at some point, you either become the person everybody thinks you are, or you just hide. I didn't want to hide, so I'm sorry, I don't... It's okay. <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. What's that? Whoa. No. No. You knew you were. No, stop. Stop. You've been watching me for two years. Don't deny it. You'll miss, dude. No, it's okay. You're safe with me. I know who you are. I think it's amazing. I don't know what you think you know about me. But I need you out of my office. Hi. I'll make it easy for you. Do not make me call security. Tell them what? I assaulted you sexually. Tara, this isn't happening. I'm sorry. It's okay. I just... Spring semester starts in three weeks, and you have two sections already filled. I'm sorry. Sorry. I can recommend a replacement. I can't replace you, John. You know that. The students love you. Your class is filled in an hour. If you wanted to teach a third section, that would sell out too. And what's going on here? Something's come up, and I have to go. What? It's personal. Look, I'll get Chandra, and we can fix it. No, get please. I just have to go. Please. Just don't do this to me. I regret it, Gil. Deeply. I do. Well, obviously, I can't give you a recommendation under these circumstances. Anywhere you go, I'll have to tell them about the mess you're dumping in my lap. I understand. Paperwork for the semester all wrapped up? Grades logged, evaluations, all that? Yes, the last couple of things I'll take care of today. You're leaving that soon. I truly hope that eventually there are no hard feelings. I'll get over it. But this stinks. I was hoping to give you my chair in five or six years. I would have been honored to take it. were you thinking? I don't know. I just... You know. Uh, okay, w what else did he say? Nothing. But... What? What else? Uh, I think I maybe spilled the beans a little bit. What beans? That we know about him. Oh, my God. What exactly did you say? Uh... Well, I, I mean, does it matter if he knows that we know? Then he'll disappear for good. Oh, crap, Jenkins is on his way down here. He's on the road right now. Hey, can you call Yeah. <sighs> 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 Voicemail. <sighs> hey, Dr. Jenkins, it's Isabel Chang. Listen, um... Professor Young maybe knows we know and might be leaving here really soon. Please let me know what time you're going to get here, what we should do. <sighs> oh! Okay. 
Let's find the guys. That's gonna be okay. I knew it. I just knew it. Carolyn, please. Let's stay calm. Don't get worked up. No. Why would I? I'm only asking that you... Just to let you slip away quietly, huh? No muss, no fuss. I've left you money, of course. I don't want you to be... I don't, don't need your fucking charity, John! I have a job! I need you! I'm sorry. Um, I don't understand why you're leaving. I mean, the, the explanation part got by me somehow. I told you from the start that I would eventually move on. Yeah, but, but that's something people say, like... I hate dogs. I, I'm never getting married. I don't want kids. And people say that shit all the time. And guess what? Five years later, they're married with kids. And a dog. Not me. Well, uh, apparently not. Oh, Jesus, John. How can a man with so much passion be so cold? What was this to you? I told you how I feel. Because I'm leaving does not mean that I don't care about you. Oh, wow. That's all I'm going to get out of you, isn't it? Carolyn, no, just... No, just let... save it. Look, I'll be back in a few days. I assume you'll be gone by then. Yes. Well, uh, Merry Christmas, John. Thanks for everything. Well, just keep him there. How are we supposed to do that? Uh, I don't know, but just keep him there. I'm, I'm still about two hours away. You, you can't get here any faster? <laughs> no. I, I can only go so fast. But don't tell him I'm coming, though. Because that'll only make him leave faster. All right. Um, do your best. Yes, I will. I will do my best. Let's just keep him there, how? We know where he lives. Oh, you want to go talk to him again? You think that's the best course of action right now? What choice do we have? If we don't go see him now, we'll never see him again. Let's go. Please don't leave yet. Just stay one more night. Ha have dinner with us. Well, we only want to talk. I think it's best for everybody if I hit the road now. Please, Professor, I have so many questions for you. I'm sure my replacement will be at least as knowledgeable as I am. You know that's not what we mean. I don't know what you want from me. We don't want anything from you. I want to learn from you. This looks a lot more like stalking. We read the book. Don't deny that you're John Oldman. I see. I I'm sorry. It's fiction. Yes, I knew Art Jenkins. And yes, we gathered at my cabin and played a game. A game. A bunch of eggheads playing intellectual charades. Maybe it went too far. Art got angry. And I guess this is his response. And it's my understanding that things have not gone well for him since its publication. Early retirement. Laughed out of academia. Well, that can happen when you publish a science fiction novel as fact. So you're saying it's all lies, that Jenkins made the whole thing up? I'm saying that just because you write a book and call it nonfiction doesn't make it true. You're safe with us. 
We respect you and want to help you spread the word. What word? The word. Uh, of God. You think I'm trying to spread the word of God? Aren't you? No. I am a teacher, not a preacher. Jesus was a teacher. His last words were, go ye into the world and teach all nations. You said that. Maybe in class, I teach the Bible. You are the living embodiment of Jesus Christ. You are him, always have been, and still are. Okay, that is, what's the word I'm looking for? Nuts. I'm not even Christian. Are you or were you not Jesus? Whatever it is you kids are looking for, whatever it is you think I can tell you, you're going to have to find it somewhere else. All right, Professor. Have a good life. Good long life. Oh, shit! What happened? What did you do? I, I, I just tried to keep him here. So you killed him? I didn't kill him. I tased him. He hit his head. Is he breathing? Well? Yeah, he's alive. You are lunatic. We have to call an ambulance. Oh, hang, hang on. Wait. What, you want to make sure he's dead? You want to be the guy who killed the immortal? Well... Hello? I mean, if Jenkins' story is true, then... Then he's been through a lot worse. You are insane. We have to get him to a doctor. Hello? What did you take? I I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Art. Art Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins, what's up? <sighs> My car died, piece of crap. Uh, I'm broken down by the side of the road. You didn't let John leave, did you? Please tell me you didn't. He's uh, still here. Uh, where are you? I don't know. Uh, Red Bluff. That's about an hour away. Oh, his car broke down in Red Bluff. Where's that? Can you tell me exactly where you are? Uh, it's where the, the, the 99 meets the 5, and there's a, a motel and, and, and a lot of dirt. Can you just take an Uber? Yeah, you guys go. I got this. Okay, Dr. James, you know, we're going to come pick you up. Um, Just stay there. We're, we're on our way. We'll, we'll call when we're close, okay? Okay. Thank you. Ah! God damn it! Okay, so um, is there anything else that I should be doing? How long till you get here? Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Okay, just, uh, you guys go. The ambulance is on the way, okay? Take the idiot with you. Are, are you sure? Yeah, I got it. Oh, my God. What's going to happen when he wakes up? He's going to be so pissed. <laughs> well, he forgave Judas. Let's go. Philip, you need to release me. Philip, what am I doing here? You've kidnapped me. Do you realize that? I just wanted you to stay. I wanted to go, so you knocked me out and tied me to a chair. No, um... Cut me loose. I'll leave. You'll never hear from me again. Sorry. Can't. Yes, you can. Just cut the tape. Walk away. Do you want? Uh, do you want something to drink? 
No. Why are you doing this? Philip! I want to know the truth. You want to know the truth? Where are the others? They'll be back soon. So is there a uh, plan or are you guys just winging it? I mean, am I going to be tortured for information? I don't know where the bomb is hidden. I don't have any gold treasure stashing. I just went to go get Dr. Jenkins. Art. Art is an angry, bitter man. He does not have our best interest at heart. He only wants to talk to you. <laughs> I'm tied to a chair. And Art wants to talk to me. I'm concerned for your safety. You need to cut me loose. Where do you worship, Phil? I mean, I'm assuming that you worship somewhere because you seem to have... Would you just please just stop talking? Please! Wouldn't sitting here in silence be much worse? I don't know, okay? I'm just trying to think. It's the Jubilee Christian Fellowship, my church. I've heard of it. You live locally with your mother, right? She attends as well. Yeah. She know where you are right now. She's at a retreat. Where can I? Transformation conference. It's about uh, preparing for the future and protecting the church. So she's very involved. Both of you are. Yeah, it's her mostly because I'm, I'm busy with school. You'll be more involved after you graduate, right? We screwed up. I have questions, okay? I, I have some questions, so will you, will you answer them? To the best of my ability. I want to... You want to talk about Jesus? Okay. You believe the Bible is the word of God, right? Absolutely. How did you come to that belief? Um, growing up, my dad drank. And he hit my mother, so we got out of there. Some people took us in, and then they, uh, they brought us to the church, and it, it saved us, really. We were baptized. And Born again. And you now have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yes, sir, I do. What would he want you to do now? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Uh, who exactly do you think I am? I don't know. I don't know. You're, you're certainly the best professor that I've ever had. I mean, you know more about the Bible than even Pastor Michael's, plus every other religion besides. Most of my teachers, they don't, they won't, won't acknowledge the central truth of the scripture. They believe that faith and science cannot coexist, and that's just not true. That's not how you teach it. That just means I'm a decent teacher, right? I met Isabel freshman year. She was in your intro class. She was the first one of us to realize there's just something different about you and the way you spoke. I mean, you, you saved that janitor's life. It's just CPR, you can do it. You talked the girl out of suicide. She just needed someone to hear her. Yeah, but there's all the other weird stuff too, you know? Like, like how there's no pictures of you anywhere, there's no record of you online before you start teaching at the school. I've got my own reasons for wanting to be uh, very private these days. That's all. I mean, on one hand, what if God 
really did send his son to earth to spread his word, maybe you're exactly how we'd do it, right? Allow a man to live for thousands and thousands of years, traveling the world and collecting all of this knowledge and this wisdom. And, and, and once he's finally got it, he starts preaching. And what he's saying is the truth, so people grasp it right away. It's like Christianity. I mean, it took over the world in just a couple hundred years. Yes, it did. Makes a certain kind of sense. You want to believe that story? I'm not sure, because if you, if you are Jesus, then, then that means that the Bible is just fiction. I need, I want to know the truth. I need to know the truth. Can you, can you just tell me the truth, please? If I tell you the truth, Philip, will you let me go? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I want you to listen very carefully. Hey, just, um, just wait a sec. About 2,000 years ago, I stood on a hill in Galilee, and I spoke some basic spiritual truths that I picked up over the years. And when the Gospels were written, they called me Christ. But frankly, the whole thing got a lot bigger and went in a very different direction than I ever intended. It got violent, scary, and I took off. I've kept my head down ever since. And I have to move on far more often than I would like. But lately, something's changed. I'm getting lines in my face, gray hair. I don't heal as fast as I used to. And I don't know if it's something in the air or in the water or the, the food, something in my blood or DNA. A ticking time bomb in my soul. I feel different. Are you, are you dying? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just changing. Into what? If, if your time is limited, it's more important now than ever for you to come forward, for you to, to, to spread and share the, the word as only you can. I thought about it a lot and I want to help. There's so much pain and suffering. The New Testament said I would return, but the truth is I never left. And the book of Revelation says that Jesus will rule over this planet with his believers for a thousand years. So there a better way to help people than ruling over them like a king. But what about, what about the rapture where the dead in Christ will rise? Why not bring them into the light now? Why condemn them to darkness? Because they've condemned themselves to darkness. It's harsh. No, it isn't. That's the fate of those who haven't been saved, as the fate of those who've abandoned their faith. Everyone can be saved. Everyone can find peace and love. Why not create a heaven on earth now? We can help do that. But right now, I need your help. What can I do? It's time to cut me loose. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, what's your plan? One step at a time. I mean, if you're the son of God, why can't you just cut yourself loose? <laughs> son of man, no magical powers. Okay, you want a plan. There are many paths to enlightenment, including the born-again experience that you've had. But there are equally valid paths. No, there aren't. It, it says in, in Matthew 18.3, um, Jesus tells his disciples, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. There are other approaches to enlightenment that have been practiced throughout time across the globe. Why wouldn't we draw on that experience and that wisdom? Yeah, but do, do these other paths involve the cleansing blood of Christ? Because if... The path is less important than the goal. A personal transformation that enables us to empathize with others and bring heaven here on earth Right now, 
Rational humans have existed on this planet for 200,000 years, right? The New Testament has only existed for a fraction of that time, fellow. This, no, 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 this is, this is liberal theological nonsense. What, so you're a Methodist now? I'm not being clear. No, I, you know what? I've had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as my savior for the past 10 years now. I think I know who Jesus is, and I can tell you right now, you don't sound anything like him. I don't know what translation of the Bible you've read. Whose version? It's so seductive, isn't it? It's so seductive. The, the, the desire to believe you is so strong. But if word of your existence got out and Isabel had her way and people started worshiping you, it could destroy the world. I have no intention of starting a religion. You're a real smooth talker, Professor Young. Well, you're certainly not Jesus. You do remind me of someone else from the Bible. Someone with miraculous powers of persuasion. Someone obsessed with transforming the world, overturning the true message of the Bible. You're not Jesus Christ. You're the Antichrist. Cut me loose, Philip, so we can discuss this rationally, please. <laughs> sure, yeah. Cut loose the Antichrist. What harm could possibly come from that? Why don't you listen to yourself? A minute earlier, you're prepared to believe that I'm Jesus. Now, I'm the Antichrist. I'm not sure who you are. Maybe you're just a regular guy who's a really good storyteller. But you're the one who claimed to be Jesus, and right now you sound more like the great deceiver. Do you even know what the Antichrist is? I mean, concept doesn't exist in the Bible. The distortion that superstitious monks created by pulling completely unrelated passages together. Now, the word Antichrist appears in the epistles of John. But it never refers to a single person. You know that I'm talking about the really, really bad guy from the book of Revelations, whatever medieval monks named him. Okay, what malevolent creature from the book of Revelation do I remotely resemble to you? There's a seven-headed beast who's wounded to death. Wounds miraculously heal. You can do that. The beast blasphemes God and heaven, much like your theology of many paths. Ultimately, everyone left on earth is worshiping him. Seems like you're pushing for a similar plan. All it's missing is a 666. You got any tattoos? The nonsense about the beast, it's fantasy literature, nothing more. You really don't believe in the Bible, do you? It's a book written by people. Whenever you are, you are a serious enemy of the Bible and your message could have catastrophic effects on the Christian faith and you are a threat. I just want to be left alone. I don't believe you. I haven't lied to you once. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's have a little test of faith. For me or for you? Both of us. I know what I believe in. Okay, so if I am the beast, what do you think God would have you do with me? Probably kill you. Then do it. Let's end this. I didn't, I didn't exactly say that you were the Antichrist. I just said it could be a possibility. Well, that's good news. If you're not going to kill me for being the beast, you're going to have to let me go sometime. There's still a possibility that you could be Jesus and I can't let you go until I know one way or the other. I already told you I was. That doesn't prove anything. Then plunge your knife into me and find out for sure. If I'm Jesus, I'll survive or die and be reborn. Maybe you're just a manipulative storyteller and then I'd be a murderer. That's right. It still comes down to the same choices. Stab me or let me go. So just stick this knife in your eye or something? Why not place it on my right side? Like the Roman soldier with the spear. Yes. So you want me to stab you right now as an act of faith? I didn't say that. 
What if I want to? Then you would be... <clears throat> Philip. <sighs> Professor? Professor Young? Where are you? We have Dr. Jenkins. We're really close. Call me. So, what's your problem with him? Anyway, hmm? Me? Yeah. What, what did he ever do to you? Aside from the fact that he ruined my life? That problem? <laughs> Don't get salty, dude. What happened, Dr. Jenkins? Well, you read my book, Isabel, yes? You were all good friends? Mm -hmm. Academic peers? He told you a story one night, then just kidding, and poof, he vanished. I was angry. I, I felt betrayed. We all felt betrayed. And I left there that evening wanting to expose him for the lunatic that I thought he was. So he became a ninja stalker. I'd given up hope of finding him until I saw your email. But that doesn't explain how you went from a skeptic to a believer. I'm an archaeologist. I dug deep looking for the truth, but I couldn't disprove his fantastic story. So I, I published and- Got run out of Dodge on a rail. Sucks to be evil. No, I would agree. I guess the ambulance has already come and gone. Well, they left the front door open. Maybe there's a note. Start calling hospitals. There can't be that many in this town. Professor Young's truck is gone. <sighs> Hello? Anybody home? Still no answer. Philip, what's up? Where are you? Look, there's blood. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. What went on here? I don't know. I don't know. Philip said he was calling an ambulance. You need to call the police. Oh, hang on. We don't know what happened. That's why you need to call the police. Philip might have done something stupid. Oh, don't touch that. You have to dial 911. It's a broken chair and some blood. We don't know what went on. Two people and a car are missing. Okay, we have to find Philip. No, you have to call the police. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Look, just one minute. All right, I don't want to get in trouble, okay? No one does. Let's just think about what happened. If the ambulance came, then Professor Young is in the hospital. No, the paramedics would have stopped the bleeding down here. There wouldn't be a blood trail all the way up the <laughs> stairs right there. We're not criminals. No, no, you have no choice. But if the cops come, then we all get arrested. Okay, forget college. Forget everything. Our lives are totally over, period. But where are they? Do you think Professor Young killed Philip? I... No way. Maybe Philip killed Professor Young. Now, that is impossible, because he would have had to cut his head off, and there's not enough blood in here for that. Yes, It's a little graphic. Maybe they both just drove away together. After having a knife fight? Or a ritual sacrifice? Okay, Professor Young was leaving. Maybe he just left. No, because the Van Gogh is still upstairs. It doesn't make sense that he would leave it behind after all these years. 
Okay, listen, Tara, why don't you and Dr. Jenkins call all the hospitals, see if he's there. Liko and I will stay here, figure out what to do with this. <sighs> Sound like a plan? John! Harry! John! Oh my god! <laughs> well, I got your letter, obviously. I was surprised to hear from you, to say the least. And a letter. <laughs> well, technology is not my friend these days. was uh, a lot to absorb, John. I know. Yeah. How you feeling? I'm still sore. Not used to being injured for an extended period of time. Only been six weeks. I've had much worse, and I'm usually up in a couple of days. This is, uh, it's different, Harry. How so? I don't know. But I hope I find out soon. I like the beard. Reminds me of a schnauzer I had once. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. No, 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 no. I got it. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're living here? Uh, yes. How much longer? I don't know. Hmm? I think I found a name for myself, Harry. A classification. Holocene man. Eh. Your dates are a little off. Holy scene only goes back for 12,000 years. You, you're. Oh, I know. <laughs> Saw the ice melt. Watched the birth of an epoch. <laughs> yeah, well, the scientific community is starting to coalesce around the idea that the whole scene's over. You're now living in the Anthropocene. Ta da! <laughs> the impact of man's activities on the planet being so severe, it's changed it permanently, creating a whole new epoch. That would explain a thing or two about my condition. End of an era. Ah, John. <laughs> Come on, don't talk like that. Well, everything ends, and apparently, nobody lives forever. What is it? John, I didn't do this. Come here for any reason, except you asked. But since we're here and since we're talking, I could really use your help. It's my dad. He's, uh, he's been sick for a while and now. Would you be willing to come home with me just for, just for a while? I think he would really like to meet you. All right, go check my calendar. I think I'm free. Let's go. Thank you.
Dr. Jenkins? Yeah? Angelo Garcetti, FBI. FBI? What can I do for you? I was hoping we could talk about John Young, a.k.a. John Oldman, a.k.a. John McDell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know who you mean. I, I don't know where he is, if that's what you want to know. Oh, I'm aware of that. If you knew where he was, I'd know where he was. Oh. Is that so? Do you think he kidnapped Philip Nichols? I hope not. I'd hate to think he would hurt a kid. You have reason to believe he's capable of violence. He hunts large animals with a bow and arrow, and he butchers them with his own hands. I have no idea what he's capable of. I see. You said this man claims to be immortal? Sometimes he claims it, sometimes he denies it. Do you think it's true? I don't know anymore. Maybe he's just older than he looks. You describe him as over six feet, thin, with dark hair and eyes. Yep. Interesting. Why? What's it to you? It's a cold case. Crazy thing is, description matches a guy who died years ago. But witnesses keep placing him at the scene of violent crimes. Sick, twisted stuff, nightmares. Always a different name, different place, with the same description. I don't think John would hurt people intentionally. But he is certainly a skilled identity fabricator. Maybe so. Wouldn't the mortal identity change in serial killer? Do you think such a thing could exist? I think anything is possible. Hi again. I hope you enjoyed the film. As you probably noticed, we left the ending kind of open. And that's because we hope to make another movie or possibly even a television series. But we can't do any of that without your support. And that's why we really appreciate your decision to go to manfromearth.com and click donate. Whatever amount you think is fair. You can also help out by buying a DVD or a Blu-ray. Once again, we really appreciate your support. We thank you for watching the movie and for helping to spread the word. Washed with too many choices.